This is Listen Lakeland, the show that keeps you up to date on all the things that make our city a great place to live, work, and play. Today's host is the publisher of Sage Aging Elder Care Guide and the host of the Sage Aging Podcast. For 28 years, Elder Care Guide has helped local families navigate the aging and caregiving journey. A believer in the concept of collective impact, she's an active seven-year board member of Lakeland Vision and chairs the age-friendly Lakeland Committee. Please welcome your host, Liz Craven. Welcome to the good life. Hello, and thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Liz Craven, and it's great to be hosting this month's episode of Listen Lakeland. This show is an extension of Lakeland Vision. For over two decades, Lakeland Vision has been a voice for the citizens of Lakeland, working with community stakeholders to create a bright future for our city. Joining me today on Listen Lakeland are Colonel Gary Clark of the Polk Veterans Council and Tabitha Bradford of Cornerstone Hospice to discuss Flight of Honor. Colonel Clark has had a storied career in the United States Air Force serving from 1967 to 1993, seeing service in multiple worldwide assignments. Since his retirement from the Air Force, Gary has stayed actively involved in veterans affairs through service to organizations locally and nationwide. He's currently the chairman of the Polk Veterans Council. Tabitha Bradford comes to us from Cornerstone Hospice, where she works as a community liaison. Tabitha also serves on the Polk Veterans Council with a focus on and a passion for Flight to Honor. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining me today. I'm so excited for the opportunity to chat with you. Good to be here. Yeah, thanks for having us. So as we chat today, I really hope that the enthusiasm and the passion that exists at this table right now is able to manifest itself over the airwaves, because let me tell you, it is incredible the passion that these two individuals have for what they're doing. And so let's start by talking about Flight to Honor and what that means. Flight to Honor has a mission to honor our nation's veterans with an all-expenses-paid trip to Washington, D.C. to visit the memorials dedicated to honoring those who've served and sacrificed for our country. And I've personally experienced the Welcome Home celebration for one of these flights, and I honestly don't even have the words to properly describe what that was like. It was incredible. But Gary, let's start with you. First, a heartfelt thank you for your service to our country. Um, we appreciate you so much. Well, it was my honor. Now, you founded Flight to Honor in 2015, I believe. What led you to do that? Well, we were part of a, the West Central Florida chapter of Honor Flight. We had been invited to uh, participate when when they started. And uh, in in about uh, 2014 or so, 2013, and uh, at that time, Honor Flight, as it's known nationwide, had been in existence about seven years. It actually started in about 2006, and uh, and and so there were chapters that were starting out, and so we were invited to participate with the West Central Florida chapter. And we quickly realized after a while that there's a substantial number of veterans in the central part of the state here in, in Lakeland and Polk County and surrounding areas where getting to either Sanford, which was a, a chapter and a, and, a, and, a, and a point of departure, as well as uh, St. Petersburg was a little difficult, particularly if you get come back uh, late at night or have to be there early in the morning. And so we, we worked the first flight in uh, 2015 out of here. And uh, we were so excited about the, the reception that the veterans received when they came back from the community. And it became obvious to us at that point that this community, uh, Polk County and surrounding areas, were ready to uh, support a program like this in a way that w- was perhaps a little more difficult in some of the uh, other areas where there was uh, major commercial aviation that put some restrictions on on flight line activities and things like that. Uh, the folks uh, here could actually get out on the tarmac and fairly close to the aircraft as the as the veterans arrived. And we would ha- we had a band playing and all that. So it, it sort of cemented the idea in our minds at that time 
that uh, that we were ready to to have our own program here, and uh, and we went forward with it, uh, and and it's uh, we're about to do our seventh flight now, and uh, it's just a testimony to the community in terms of their support for that. And it's an incredible program. And I remember that first return home welcome ceremony. I was there. And that was a very emotional experience to see the looks on the people's faces as they were coming off of the aircraft and into this celebratory arena. It was, I, there were people dressed up in period costumes and there was music and cheering and celebration and what an incredible experience. It kind of raises the hair on your arms, <laughs> well, but exactly. And, and that's what, uh, you know, to, to, to continue to that, to that tradition was something that we, we wanted to, to do. And, and I think we've been fairly successful at being able to do that in getting, uh, and, again would emphasize to folks to uh, to come back and if i you know that first flight that you refer to we had a, a number of, of world war ii veterans many of whom unfortunately have passed um and and more recently we've had korean war veterans and uh, and now it's mostly vietnam but but each group is a little bit different uh the world war ii folks were were just appreciative um and, you know, if you look at that generation, and my father was one of those, uh, you know, they came back and took their uniforms off and went to work and, and, and built the country that, uh, that, that, that we're fortunate enough to live in now. Uh, the Korean War veterans were largely forgotten. I remember the ones in my small town, hometown of, um, of Can in Kansas, uh, the, the Korean war vets were not appreciated, uh, on a national level. And, uh, unfortunately many of them died way too young uh, for various reasons. The Vietnam of which I'm a part of, and I can reflect a little bit on that. When we came back, uh, we didn't exactly get a rousing, uh, uh, sign of appreciation, uh, and for for many of these folks, that homecoming on uh, on flight to honor when they return, that's the homecoming they never got. And we hear that said over and over again of, of, of Vietnam folks, and and I can sort of appreciate that because I remember what it was like coming home. And um, but in my situation, I also had the opportunity to participate in Desert Storm, and that homecoming was entirely different. And uh, so in a way that we're trying to replicate what, what the Desert Storm veterans received uh, as, a, as a way of thanking the Vietnam veterans and the Korean War veterans who, who never really received the, 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 the appreciation that, uh, that they deserved. So that's, that's what makes this, this, this whole program, I think, meaningful to, to those of us that are older, and we are getting old, um, and uh, and trying to transfer that emotion or that feeling to younger people like Tabitha and others who didn't weren't even alive at that time or were very young and to, and to try to understand why it's important to those that that go off to war or why it's important to have the support behind them that uh, that that is so necessary to um, to be to be successful, and uh, hopefully, we'll never see uh, another veteran experience the kinds of things that the Vietnam and the Korean War veterans experienced. I hope that I hope that to be true. So let's talk about flight day. This is a pretty incredible experience. It's it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, not only for the veterans themselves, but for the guardians who are participating. So, what happens on flight day? Well, it, it, each each veteran, we, we pair up with a guardian. And one of the purposes of, uh, of the guardian program, of having guardians, is to give, in many cases, individuals who have never experienced military service uh, the opportunity to interface with a veteran and maybe share some of his or her emotion or experiences in a, in, in a way that, it, that brings out some meaning to uh, to them that that they can appreciate, and so that's why that's important. I mean, some people say, "Well, why don't you let spouses be guardians for their veteran?" 
Um, we don't allow that. And, and the reason is very simple is uh, they live with them all the time. <laughs> it, you know, we want somebody and, and preferably somebody that doesn't know the veteran at all. But we do have situations where there are uh, family members like a daughter or a son that would like to go with their father or with with their mother. I mean, we make exceptions for that because those are some, I, I know in my case, I, I wish I'd had more time to talk to my dad about his experiences. Um, and, uh, but, but on, uh, we, we have an orientation on, on the Sunday before we, we depart, we depart on Tuesdays and, uh, and it's an early morning. Uh, we ask they uh, they arrive at Lakeland Linder International Airport at uh, no later than 0400, and um, we have a breakfast for them. That's uh, that's uh, fortunately uh, donated by uh, by uh, Chick Fil A here in in town, and uh, and then others. Uh, that Walmart makes donations, and there's others uh, for food items, and uh, so we looked for a six o'clock d- departure headed up to Washington. So it's early and it's going to be a long day, but it's one that they won't for easily forget. Uh, and we, we get into, um, uh, uh, brand of, uh, or, um, Baltimore, uh, international airport, um, Baltimore, Washington, I guess the international airport. Now we get in there usually between eight and eight thirty. we load buses on the buses and we head off uh, to, uh, to the DC it takes about an hour. And we get there, and the first stop is the World War II Memorial. And uh, for the World War II folks, uh, this is this is an incredible testimony to their courage and their dedication and their service. And for anyone that's never had the opportunity to stand there and witness that memorial, uh, it's uh, it, it is it is awesome and awe inspiring. And uh, and then it's uh, at the other end, sort of at the other end of the of the mall. There is the the Lincoln Memorial, uh, flanked on either side by the Korean War Memorial and the Vietnam Memorial. And it, it's it, it is a, a here here again. It is a a a, t- a testimony to the the struggles that the, the the citizens of the nation have gone through. To preserve the freedoms that uh, that we we all enjoy, uh, it's it's not done without controversy. And there was, I happened to be stationed in Washington at the time of the war, uh, the Korean, uh, or excuse me, the Vietnam Memorial, and there was a lot of discussion about uh, what it ought to look like, where it ought to be, and things like that. And even to the to, from the time they started uh, uh, moving dirt. Uh, there were still some some questions as to whether or not that was the right thing. Same way with the World War II Memorial. But you stand on that Lincoln Memorial steps and you look down that mall, the World War II Memorial is precisely where it needs to be. And it was a uh, testimony to people like Senator Bob Dole and others who, who had this vision and, and, and saw that. And similarly with Vietnam, uh, there's probably no place that's more emotional for Vietnam veterans than the Vietnam Memorial because all of us have friends on there, and uh, it's it's um, it's it's tough at times. And this is this is a thing that for the Vietnam guys, it's 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 incredibly important that they have a chance to to visit that memorial, and uh, and we do, and we we try to allow as much time as possible there, and then from there we go to uh, uh, Arlington National Cemetery and uh, have a chance to. Uh, to uh, see the changing of the guard, and uh, and again, Arlington in and of itself is a is a emotional, awe inspiring uh, type place as as well. And uh, with with the history that's there, uh, and uh, going back to you know the Civil War and uh, and every every year since. So uh, this this is the 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 importance of. Of, of doing these kinds of, of things to give folks a chance. And there's also lots of little stories that come about uh, out, out of all this. When, when, on our last flight that we went uh, last year, one of the guardians had a chance to visit the grave of his brother who was oh, killed wow. in Vietnam. And uh, we didn't know that until, we didn't know that until we found out about it uh, during the flight that he he wanted to see his brother's grave, wow. and so this is, you know, this is just another little, uh, you know, sidebar to, to to what it is that this is all about. But then we, 
Wait, when we head back to war, to uh, to Lakeland, we we usually look to have wheels up about six o'clock uh, in the in the evening and get back here around eight and uh, and uh, to the to welcome home reception and uh, and and then you hear the stories and they are incredible stories that that, uh, that people relate. You know, I can see even just speaking about it has quite an impact on you. Well. <laughs> sure it does. I mean, I think it has an impact on everybody. Um, you know, it, it's it, it's hard to describe uh, if you've never experienced, let's say, a loss. Um, you know, I was in college in 1966, and uh, I get a phone call from my mother. Now we didn't have cell phones. We it, we you had to drop a quarter in the phone and, and all mm-hmm. that. But I got a call from my mom. My mom never called. Uh, unless there was something important. Well, she called to tell me that my childhood friend that I'd gone to high school with, uh, uh, and he'd gone off, uh, I'd gone to college, he'd gone to the Marines, uh, he'd been killed in Vietnam. And, uh, uh, you know, Bill Copeland was somebody that, you know, I played football with. I We tipped over outhouses on Halloween, all this kind of stuff, you know, as, as kids growing up and now he's gone. And so it, it has an impact on you. And so each one of the, each one of the folks that participate in, in, in this program, this flight to honor program, you know, they have a story, uh, and they, it, it, it's something that's worthwhile listening to and it's worthwhile, uh, seeing them, you know, reflect back on, on the life that they've had and the choices they made and, and, and all. So, yeah, I'm sorry. No, it's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing so openly. It's really a good thing for the rest of us to hear because you're right. We can't understand it. We haven't been in your shoes. And I think it's a beautiful thing that you're making this possible for, for the veterans to be honored in the way that they should be always and also for others to experience and learn from their experiences well it may certainly what makes it possible is the support we get from the community i mean it it's it's an expensive proposition because unlike you know in some of the honor honor flight programs uh, we we say flight to honor because we're not directly part of the honor flight network uh, and we chose not to be uh, the uh, for various reasons, but the, uh, the the others generally operate out of a out of a hub that has commercial aviation involved, and so and, and, and so they can they can buy a block of seats, let's say on an aircraft, and that that's regularly scheduled or something like that. In our case, we can't do that. We actually charter an airplane. Uh, to come in and um, and then we you know we we leave out of out of uh, Lakeland Linder with 185 souls on board and uh, so the aircraft is ours and, and so it it allows us to take more veterans than than most are able to do and uh, and we have uh, some flexibility in when we go how we go what we do things like that and uh, and it's actually a fun fun trip from that standpoint it, it, the 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 flight crew generally says as long as we don't do anything illegal and try to open the door or something like that <laughs> we we have a we we can just about do uh, anything we want as as long as we are in, in compliance with all the, all the regulations and so it's it's kind of it can be kind of a party atmosphere and fantastic uh, it's 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 a fun thing and uh very enjoyable, as well, Tabitha is, will say. Yeah, <laughs> that is a really great segue into hearing from Tabitha because Tabitha has served as a guardian for a flight to honor. If I'm not, if I'm just one, just one, la- the last one, year. right? Mm-hmm. And yes. the next one is coming up in April. April 26th. Right? April 26th. Yes. So tell us from your perspective as a guardian what that day was like. I don't know that anybody can really prepare you for it. Um, I kind of went in naively thinking this is going to be a great experience. I'd been to DC actually in December, um, the year before that. And, and, but the minute that you walk in, I got there at like three o'clock in the morning. Cause I was super excited. I didn't sleep the night before. And, um, 
I already knew because you have that Sunday before where you get to meet your um, the veteran that you're paired with. And the minute you walk into the room, it's just a sea of veterans and you feel this energy already and it just kind of like sucks you in. Um, but there's there's nothing like that camaraderie that you see between them. It's like people that have never met each other because they have that shared experience and the fact that they let civilians come in and join in that and share with us it for me especially having that parallel of what it had been like being there um in dc without that without a veteran and then experiencing it not with just one but there were 80 85 i believe um, 86 86 and it was just so impactful it gives you a completely different feel a completely different appreciation. You can read stories and you can hear history and you can view it, but to be able to experience that firsthand with a person who has served our country and given so much and and to be able to have that privilege of hearing that experience, um, there's nothing like it. And then the, the, all day long, I said, I feel like we got matched like on match.com, <laughs> the gentleman <laughs> that I was paired with. He was so perfect. Um, he, we just had a lot of the same energy, a lot of the same um, likes, even though we were completely far removed age wise. Um, we had the greatest time and it was so wonderful for him to, he shared with me, his father served in World War II um, and he shared um, some experiences with me, and what a privilege for him to open up and 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 let me be a part and show me that world. Um, and then um, one of my favorite things um, was we walked down the reflection pool and just kind of shared. Just not um, he is a Vietnam veteran, and so that was a little bit hard for him. And so um, I learned to kind of he he wasn't ready to talk about that. Um, but he shared with me about his wife and his children and his life and um, just really opened up to me, which was fantastic. And we had such a great day. Um, the return home is like nothing you'll ever experience. Um, you can't even put it into words. Like you said, when you step off, one of the cool things Gary was sharing about being there on the tarmac is so you come off on this platform and the sun setting, there's there's these water cannons that greet you as you come in and you step out of the plane. He and I are like literally holding on to each other as we stepped off and you just gasp because there's this sea of people. There's this live band playing. Everybody's cheering and there's signs and flags and and it, it literally takes your breath away. And I know for him that was impactful. It was something that he didn't get have when he came home and it it was a mixture of I couldn't tell if he wanted to laugh or he wanted to cry or wanted to do both and I was right there with him um and it was just such I I had the privilege of staying in contact with my veteran and I actually saw him um about two or three weeks ago and spoke to his wife and she shared with me how thankful and grateful she was she said this year has been so different for him he printed out this giant poster of the group picture that we have together. She said he literally looks at that picture every single day. And she said, I just want to thank you and what you guys do because it has made an impact for the good. And that's what it's all about. It's about being able to impact those that have given so much and give something back to them. That is so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that story. And I, I have seen you share even more of that story and I wish we had time to go into that. We don't have time to forever. do the whole thing, but <laughs> it's beautiful and it's emotional. And it's it's a shame that we all don't get to experience that level of interaction the way that you did. Um, but having said that, there are a lot of ways for community to become involved. And I know you're working with some local students to write cards and yes. letters to the veterans that they can have on their way home. Tell me about that. So um, it's one of the things that we do at Cornerstone um, to help partner with that. We have one of our um, volunteer coordinators and she works with um, people in the community. Um, 
we talk to different teachers and different organizations, um, it gives an opportunity for them to be able to educate that younger generation about what it's like to serve our country. And so it gives them an opportunity to learn that. And then they can in turn write a letter, draw a picture, um, and be able to say thank you. Um, and so we have enlisted a lot of, of local teachers. Um, there are different organizations. I know um, different churches and things like that locally that are getting involved in giving letters to us. Um, and so it's just a, another way to involve that community to further educate on on this great nation that we serve and, and make sure that the younger people for, don't forget about that. Absolutely. Now, if somebody were interested in becoming a guardian or becoming involved at a higher level than the support of showing up for the coming home celebration, what would they do? Well, they can go to our um, polkveteranscouncil.com website, and uh, it, it talks about the, the, the flight. The, there's guardian applications that, that one can download and, and, and fill out. It talks a little bit about um, the program and, and, and how it's conducted and the role of the guardian in, uh, in accompanying a, a, a veteran. And, we, you know, we encourage people to do that. Um, and, again, if, uh, if for some reason one's not selected for uh, the flight this year, there's always next year. And, uh, and in fact, uh, we, we, we never drop um, an application. Uh, we, we continue to hold on to them until the individual is able to go or decides to, to withdraw and uh, not be considered again. But um, so it's, it's become more and more popular as the, as the program has grown. And, uh, and we appreciate that. You know. And you know, it's a it's an incredible opportunity that you offer people to be able to experience that. And from my understanding, this will be the first flight that you actually will go on. Is that well, correct? Actually, I went on the last, last one. Year. The yeah. last one. Yeah, I went, went on the last one. It was it was the first time that I went on the one out of here. Uh, I've been in Washington to, to when other flights have have uh, arrived before, but this was uh, for various reasons. Uh, I, I I stayed behind to make sure everything was coordinated on this end and be kind of a uh, a sounding board back here. Uh, but uh, it, it's it it it's a great experience, and and you know I was happy to be able to go with uh, with a large group of Vietnam veterans uh, as well as as this year will be the same. Uh, uh, the majority w again will be Vietnam veterans, and and we could tell stories all day about. But we got a letter from a daughter of a one of the veterans that was on the last flight his uh, he her father had passed away around the thanksgiving time frame but she wrote a very heartfelt letter about <clears throat> what the flight meant to him and how much he talked about it and how much he appreciated it and just he went uh, on and on about it but it was a, a beautiful letter and uh, that was one of the things that was the highlight of his life and it happened in the very last stages of his life and uh, so that that makes it you know one one of those makes it all worthwhile you know a hundred percent it's <laughs> it's a gift for the veteran and it's a gift for the entire family and not to mention the whole community right exactly. absolutely and so are there any for our last question here what other ways can the community support you in these efforts well the the you know, we, we always say uh, contributions because this is all donation funded, and uh, it's it's not inexpensive when you when you uh, charter a large aircraft, and then uh, buses up in Washington and meals and everything else that goes along with it. So uh, donations to Give Well Community Foundation for Flight to Honor are always appreciated. The other is is uh, certainly to come out and welcome the folks home when uh, when the when the flight returns home. But then on an ongoing basis, when there are veteran-related activities um, around uh, the county, around a town, around Lakeland, um, uh, come out and, uh, and participate. That, that's very meaningful. We have a Veterans Day ceremony every year. We've got a 9-11 uh, ceremony over in Winter Haven. And uh, we have other uh, ceremonies that are going on. Vietnam Veterans Day is the 29th of uh, March this year. And uh, so... It, uh, you know, there's, there's ways of, of uh, just, just being present. You know, 90% of life is showing up, and uh, oh, that's, that's great. important. <laughs> that's true. It is. It is. And we all need to show up for each other, and we are so 
blessed to live in the Lakeland community because this is a community that does show up. Absolutely. And thank I you. am very thankful to live here. Well, thank you so much, both of you, for joining me today and for sharing so openly and for all that you do in this community. It's just incredible, and we appreciate you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for doing Thanks, this. Liz. And thank you for tuning in to Listen Lakeland. Your feedback is valued, and we encourage you to head over to lakelandvision.org to participate in our monthly survey related to today's show topic. Listen Lakeland is brought to you as a collaborative project between Lakeland Vision, the City of Lakeland, and Hall Communications. Truly a community working together to keep you informed on the many things that make Lakeland such an amazing city. Thank you for being with us.